far as expected, the Ezreal is going into a possible same plane up against the Zeri matchup. As you have mentioned a while ago, it has the advantage up against it just because of the range. Now, G2 Blacklist removes the Vladimir away from the table here for now. So, Esport. Oh no. What are they going to deny here? Yeah, Vladimir oh, is going to be out. Yasuo is not going to be seen. There's still an Orn that is that could be picked here by G2B, so it's still a safe pick for them. It's going to be left open. What they are afraid of is what the mid lane is going to be picked here. Golden Kite could go for a Ziggs to get that extra wave clear for the team, so it would be hard for Naos to go for a wave clear. But Naos could also do the same. What if Naos goes for a utility bot lane? Oh, <laughs> Lilia! Lilia going into Naos? Once what again, bringing up this untraditional picks. Fate has always been great with this types of champions. But That's why I'm not afraid that he could perform well with this. Hear me out. Naos went in for AP jungle. So they could yeah. definitely go for the Ash pickup. If ever Murmur wants to bring it up once again here in game number three specifically, just to really just change the tide of this game in the series, it could possibly happen. But G2 Blacklist, Having the priority onto the Nautilus and a possible Zoe pickup also has so much poke built into the composition. Yeah. What are they gonna change here? I, oh, I, the Cassadin! I'm Kassadin. curious what they go. That's a Cassadin against a Zoe. A lot of AP champions on the side of G2B could easily be taken down by the Cassadin. With that, Mitsura is gonna be a force to be reckoned with again this coming game. Yeah, 100%. Especially going into the silence. If you silence the like of the the Avalon, the Zoe, the Zeri, it's just a sentence of death. It's just a statement of death here um, yeah. from game number three for now. So definitely a crucial champion and a crucial player for the side of Naos will be their mid laners and yeah. also the bot lane, how they would perform up against Zeri and how they would push them back into the early game. Yeah, they would need to find a way to win this in the early game. The Kassadin would have a lot of problems in the early game though. So this this is going to be a good start. They could go for the early game on the side of G2B and maybe snowball that against the members of uh, Naos Esports. Mm -hmm. Something that I'm just a little bit fearful for is how this would play out for Naos. Because they went in for the Garen, they went in for the, uh, the Lilia. And it's something that we haven't seen for the longest time. How would they perform with this untraditional picks in their yeah, That's gonna be the question here. Now with G2B and Naos going for a whole three series. Gonna be starting this with the bang. Now C Sports would want to get the streak going, but G2B is not gonna let that happen. Yeah, it's not gonna let that happen now is still Holding up the hopes to be able to beat down the childhood heroes, B2 Blacklist. But remember, if Naos Esports win this, they will be on the win streak and they will have no loss as of yet in Season 2. Yeah. This is something that they need to prove against a lot of the squads that we have here. Lilia against Anevelin, a very untraditional matchup for, for the jungle. Look at how aggressive KD is being here on the jungle right here of Fate. But they're taking a long time. There's a lot of members from the side of G2B that are also rotating to this side of the map. So that they would easily take down this jungle. This has always been the case whenever you're using an Evelyn, go to the other side of the jungle. Yeah, it's just good macro as well. CP triple bubble. Okay. Could he go for the flash though? Nice block by Mitsura. Yeah, and right now, draw is just having the safety net for Aaron that he needs because of... The current state was HP, but what I was about to say is the really good macro that G2 Blacklist is doing. They know that KD is going for the Raptors. They know that they are going in for the jungle invade, so they rotate. G2 Blacklist, though, yeah. onto Fade. Okay, on Fade, gonna see where he is. Rotation's not effective. They got the flash. They're gonna go in. They dash in forward. Draw is gonna die, but at what cost is Fade gonna die too? Yes, it is. Golden Kite is gonna be next. They still have two members right here. Here comes KD to go for the support. They have one, the damage is not enough. Aaron can still help him out. He still have the Sleepy Trouble Bubble at the ready, but here comes the battle. Star from far away, the charm is not gonna oh. hit. 
and the sleep for Chubble Bubble is gonna be going on Mitsuda. Mitsuda might be the one dead here. That's a lot of damage, but because they're both Iran? AP champions, Mitsuda could go for the fight, flashes in, and he's not afraid to go in for more. KD is also gonna fall. Naos was just able to be on top of that fight. Raw is just gonna be running away, but that is another kill to the board for the other side. Oh my gosh, the two for five trade in favor for Naos. G2 Blacklist overextended into chasing Margo down. That became the detriment for the team. Oh my infinity. This is a crazy season. Now yeah. it's Esports winning against G2B. This is not something that you always see. Yes, they did that during season one. But when G2B got the runner-up placement, I wasn't expecting this to happen. Yeah, it's just because of the achievement that they were able to achieve in Season 1, representing APAC and representing the Filipino fans into the final stage up against the Titans of League of Legends Water. It's just too much, but right now, Naos has just a massive lead up against G2 Blacklist. Not stopping at this early game. I'm loving the development here from now as fate has been such a great addition here for now as they have been a lot more decisive when it comes to this fight. Yes, that fight was not was not the cleanest, but now it's got on top there. A lot of aggression is happening. They need the black guys to go for the refall. Okay, they can go in for the mid lane. Mitsuda is still very, very tanky. Would have the rip walk in just a bit. Last caress to end his life. Aaron was just moving forward. And with that, Troy is going to be next. A two for one in the mid lane. Yeah, I mean, just too much. Now, us getting the one for two trade once again into the mid lane. That was just so impressive. G2 Black does going into the backside was a really good attempt. But the thing is, Margo is still there. Right, and you have the explosive cast to deny that possible for the engage. Draw is also there, but the thing is, they've already used up the flash, they've already used up the ultimate, and it was now also a bit back, G2 Black. Margo has been super good at just defending their teammates, especially in the yeah. mid lane. The only problem here is G2B always goes in for the mid lane, wants to deny the Mitsuda the early game, but the problem there is, against magic damage, Akasadin is not going to be afraid of that. Yeah. It's so difficult overall, right? It's Mitsuro who's just able to riff walk in and out of fights, and that's just the capability that the, the Kassadin has into this game. And plus, you have the body slam, you have the the awareness, the micro that that Margo has intact. It's just really good. Yep. And for now, with the rotation, I've been seeing a lot of great things from Margo. Margo has always been at the top against Draw this two games so far. Game 2 and Game 3. Margo has been first to the pitcher rather than having Draw on that side. Now, you have Jeffdeck coming in. I am excited to see how this fights are going to go. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a different story, right? It, it's always Margo who is dictating where Draw is going to go. It's not That's Draw true. going in for the mirror rotations. It is always Margo going first and forcing the hand of draw to go into the same position to not let that huge advantage go to now the side. Yeah, G2B already got the rip held on their side. The sound in the mid lane would be falling, 2000 HP. That's four stacks of gold that is going to go through the hands of G2B. Really good way to start for them. They are going to bridge that gap. That they had, but that is ultimate going to happen. Lifting Lullaby is going to be there with Explosive Cast close to Aaron. He's going to be close and dead. That is... What was that, Margo? Margo and Delilia making it happen. Margo went in as soon as the Steve connected. He just oh, went in man. for the body stand. Went in as well with the Explosive Cast as well to isolate Aaron into a different position. It was... I'm telling you, Margo is just built different. Oh man, Marco has been so crazy this game two and game three. The reaction, the timing, the connection from now C Sports. Oh man, this is such a glow up from this team. Yeah, you have the most improved mid laner to side of G2 Blackness, but you also have possible the most improved team coming in from season one here to season yeah. two. Oh man, good season one away from us in season two a different era has already been born now what can they do 
or more what surprises i'm just waiting for all the surprises that they can give us yeah and now you have margo still there g2 blacklist has no information now going for the yeah. proto belt they're gonna follow through they're gonna be denying kd not a lot of damage still at this You're early right. game sniper trouble bubble is not gonna hit it's they're gonna be getting some platings onto the bot lane still good but now they're gonna be starting this now they're waiting for it oh almost close close so close. close yeah if margo was able to isolate one target under the turret rip what can star. happen now Mitsuda is going to be here. KD, super fast with a great silence to deny the last caress. They have one on the back line. They're going to be chasing down this tank. Raw is going to be next on the chopping block. They're going to be trying to kill him as fast as they could. They go for the dredge line. They try to get for the kill. They have the lightning crash. The damage Ooh. from Golden Kite is crazy. Look at that. He's still following through. He's still not stopping. But that is enough. Two kills in the board for them. Yeah, good utilization of ultimate coming from Aeron. Or while Golden Kite rather just changed things up. Got the double kill away from Naos. And that was the signal for them to retreat. They cannot fight G2 Blacklist. With Golden Kite and Aeron still available into that engage. Yeah, Golden Kite. Oh, onto the back line with the lightning crash. The chain lightning still help them out in order for them to win that fight. Yeah, but looking at the opposite side is G2 Blacklist and Naos here on top. It's Ime versus Calm. And Calm is just getting targeted by Ime. You have the follow through yeah. flash. It's just a 1v1 happening. You have the stun coming in. Oh, it's just a lot. A lot. Oh, is he going to be dying? It's too? a one for one. Oh, that's a one for one. Oh, uh, no. Unexpected. But again, everybody, we're still waiting for the next objective. Two minutes before the next dragon comes in. And seeing, seeing some good things from Nas. Yeah, it's really interesting that we're seeing just a lot of aggression coming from both sides because expectedly, right, it is G2 Blackest who wants to go a little bit slow. But right now, yeah. Katie. Column is being chased. Right now, Fate wouldn't have the answer here. You have to see Pitch Bubble, Bubble and this guy. But that two shot barrage. Oh, wow. It's really unfortunate. G2 Blackest was just able to look into uh, the top laner for Naos. Goes in for the charm, goes follow through with the Sippy Trouble Bubble as well. After that, it's just full-on combo for G2 Blackest with a double AP champion. First thing going down. Yeah, loving this from G2B. Even though they didn't get the dragon, they have two towers down already inside of Naos Esports. And this is what they need to do. They need to get the gold lead, a very sizable gold lead against Naos Esports. Because now, what G2B can do here is just to stop the bleeding from last game just to get the momentum back before they're actually confident on taking another fight right Bu buy a band-aid put betadine on it right on to yeah. g2 blacklist's car is coming in from game number two but so far they already got 2k goldie 3k goldie up against naos and they are playing at a very good and consistent pace up against naos denying them of the gold advantage they priorly had yeah, we're seeing some cracks on the side of Naos Esports because they don't have damage in this early game. They would need the Kassadin to have more damage. That's going to be one already. That's the Dragon easily taken by them. But now Marco. Naos, Marco is going to go in. Was able to push back Aaron. They got the Flash. Was able to hold on to one. There's going to be a 1v4. Make at the 5v5. That's going to be one dead. Calm is going to fall down. G2B. Are they going to stop at here? Draw. They're going to be holding down Margo. No more setups were done. And this is G2B still going. And e May. Ruleless Predator on to Mitsuda. But Naos is still not getting any kills among the members of G2B. Still got one, but that trench line was denied by the crown. Yeah, Margo has no more HP. KD. Okay, moving front. Last caress. Exhausted, not enough execution. Oh damage my. fate. Almost dies there to the battle star. So much damage coming in from Aeron. This is the power of Zoe. When it comes to the first item, he just provides so much capability for the team. Oh man, G2B. Golden Kite is so fed this game. It's not gonna matter if they try to go to the back line. It's still not gonna be easy to get down on Zeri. And Golden Kite would be the golden man of this game. And look at Tom. Into the top side, goes for the flash. Ooh, gets it. One more decisive strike could end his life. Gets the honey fruit. He may 1 HP. But Kyle no is still shot. gonna chase down with a Tom in his perfect timing. What There's is that no Ime? So much sustainability and he clutched up with the Honey Fruit as well. And now it's Aaron and Draw coming into top lane. Oh uh, no. Now that's gonna be towered down on the bot side, or rather on the top side. And now it's slowly crawling back to this game. 
And look at the gold distribution. Aaron, Katie, Golden Kite getting the top most gold distribution throughout both these teams with 9.6k gold across the board. So these carries are getting sufficient amount of gold and their jungler as well. This is what G2 Black has won. We're waiting for them to scale. We're waiting for the mid to get to level 13. For now to be dealing the damage that they would want. There's a lot of damage potential on the side of G2B once the late game hits. That is where Naos could have a problem here. They might be lacking in damage later on. And now you have Draw being seen by Lilia. Now, Baron is still available. No information for now. Ooh, can take this fast. At 12 minutes, that Baron could be taken easily by the Evelyn and Golden Kite. So, KD could just wait for this. Just need to get information. They're just getting as much as they can from Margo with the barrels. For now, the setup is on the hands of G2B because they're slowly creeping in the jungle of Naos. But the thing is, G2 Blacklist is just delaying this fight. They don't need to force an all-in because you have Renekton split pushing into the bottom lane. You have KD also controlling the wave in the top side. Ooh, exhaust was used already. But oh, Margo! Oh, two members forced to go into deny Renekton into the bottom lane. G2 Blacklist could now force a fight. Might go for Fade. Aaron is going to be here, force the flash. So that is good already. They use some ultimates, but the flash from Fate should have been important. Yeah, should be. So far, everyone's playing really patiently considering you have the Baron available into this game. If someone loses a fight into the following matchup... Oh, wait! The team okay, that wins it will get the Baron. I was scared for that. The sleeper trouble bubble on the Cassidy. I mean, Cassidy could really tank that damage, but here... Look at Calm, just pushing down the towers. That's and he one. might be killed here in the process, but it's all right for the team. Ime is still chasing down. One last Karras could end his life. He doesn't even need Mitsura. to do that. Mitsura, look at that. He was able to cleanse it with the Quicksilver Enchant. Was able to run away. He was able to retreat safely into the matchup, but QSS used is really unfortunate. Only traded for the Sleepy Trouble Bubble to deny it. Yeah. And so far, it's G.U. Blackness who has a huge, huge lead still up against now. Still sustaining yep. and being really consistent on the game. They're having hard time in trying to engage against the members here of, of G2B. That's the reason why they really need Margo to make things work here. Mitsuda is still at level 12. It's going to be hard until he reaches level 13. If he reaches level 13, that is when he's going to jumpstart this game. Yeah. Although, really unfortunate. The thing is, it's Zeri who's already building up closely into this third item, really, really close by because you already have the Inquisitor's Calling, you already have yeah. the, uh, the Penetration item, so that's soon to be Mortal Reminder. Yeah, Ocean Drake's being taken, really bit, oh, close, 300 HP. But G2B is still gonna back away. We really want to get that Baron, they're gonna be securing some vision on this side of the map. Yeah, he has vision already, 5k gold lead still by G2 Blacklist. They now have the priority when it comes to the top quadrant jungle. Yep. We're seeing Fate. Some damage coming into their side. Still have some mark on their hand, but they're going to be seeing Mitsuda. Oh, he would be able to rip walk away. That's KD dead. They have a Mitsuda engine on the back line, but they are going to be able to dodge away. Mirabel trying to deal some damage against Golden Kite. But it's still okay. Still okay for now. But their tower bot lane has been taken down. Yeah, they have been taking a lot of macro plays still for G2 Blackness. This is what we're mentioning before, how G2 Blackness just utilize into bathing Naos into these mini engages, into these mini brawls, wherein their Renekton is split pushing on the opposite part of the map. They secure the tier 2 turret in the bottom lane. Yep. And from what they're seeing now, they're looking for any opportunities that they can. That misstep from G2B could be one of many. But they should find a way to start fights themselves. Because if not, this gold lead is just going to stay at that. Yeah. It, it definitely is scary that Naos has to do something and force something. Because G2 Blackness, if they just delay it, they're going to have a massive attack. Why? They have Zoe, they have Zeri, they have Evelyn who can just look into these engages and have the target onto Murmur. And that's just a huge difficulty for now. Right, so now Esports has to make something. Mm -hmm. well, Fate needs to get his flash just for him to get a five man Lilting Lullaby. It's one of the things that you need whenever you have a Lilia. You need to have a great oh setup. Mirmo's half HP and Katie's coming in. 
needs to be careful in the right side of the map. Just from one shot. Oh. And KD also has the crown. Oh, gets it in the end. KD is going to be able to run away here. Rip Fox is going to be used by Mitsuna. Silence. One more. But KD, that's a bit too aggressive though. Mitsuna is going to be able to survive. Margo. Margo tried their best to save anybody, but no. Margo's dead. Yeah, that's just a quick rotation and quick thinking coming from KD. You know what? Ime is on the bottom lane. Let's use Askares to dodge the silence. It was just really good overall. He, she, he also had the crown to have that extra safety net. So now that Naos lost Mermo, they lost a huge chunk of damage. That is enough. That is enough for them to call the Baron. And in 30 seconds, we're going to have the next objective, which is going to be the Elder Drake. From what we're seeing, really Naos is really looking to go for a kill. Anything that they can get is going to be enough. Ime is going to be running away. They're going to be losing this on the Elder Drake fight. So this might be a 4v5. Really good angle for them. Yeah, now was the, at the very least, the silver lining. They got a kill into the bottom lane. Remove Ime from the board. But the thing is, G2 Blacklist still has four people with the Baron buff. And they have 7.5k gold lead with 2k gold increase from their prior gold advantage from oh. that fight alone. They can go for this. They are five man strong. Five man unit. G2B only has four. So if ever they start this, Mitsuda is going to be the first target. Mitsuda is able to rip walk away. One more shot coming in with that charge. Battle start from Aaron was perfect. And now it's going to be a 4v4. Their numbers advantage turned into an even level playing field, but they're still fighting. Yeah, they still don't have one of their persons right there onto the back line. KD might go in. Margo is now going to die. No HP on Normal. their side. Aaron is such a monster this game. He's hitting every paddle start that is needed by G2B. And now with the Elder Drake as well in favor for G2 Blacklist. It's just overcoming it from oh! now. Aaron is just crazy with the Zoe. He single-handedly just made everybody's life hard on the side of Naos. G2B just followed suit after he got the kill. And this game is for G2B to take a revenge from that 2-1 from last season. And they get it this time around in Season 2. The redemption game coming in from G2. Blacklist up again.